The next material I want to highlight is polylactic acid. Uh, this has a couple of features that uh, are important. Uh, one is that it's uh, produced from uh, natural feedstocks. Uh, and the other one is that it's a degradable polymer. So it breaks down over time. Uh, and that's of interest today because people are interested in controlling waste uh, associated with uh, disposable plastic uh, materials. So this is the chemical structure of the monomer of uh, polylactic acid. Uh, you can imagine it's uh, as a lactic acid based uh, chemical group uh, that's repeated. Uh, so it's a bioplastic because it can be produced from natural feedstocks uh, like uh, starch. Uh, so corn, sugarcane, uh, materials like that uh, are the raw materials uh, to produce PLA. It's also biodegradable uh, because notice that there's this ester linkage uh, within the repeat unit. This can be cleaved uh, and allow the polymer to break down into smaller and smaller components uh, in the environment. So these materials are being used increasingly for packaging, uh, tableware, cups, plates, cutlery, uh, anything that's disposable, uh, people are interested in using materials like this because they could potentially uh, break down uh, in a landfill or after disposal. PLA is also used a lot as a filament for 3D printing uh, because uh, as we'll see later, it's a, an example of a, a glassy a polymer. Uh, so it has properties that are uh, temp thermal properties that are very compatible with, uh, with the, the 3D printing process. I want to just uh, review briefly the degradation mechanism for PLA because it's kind of the first example of a material that we've seen like this. Uh, and so here I'm drawing a polymer chain of uh, PLA. Uh, and what I want to highlight is sort of three segments. So this is the sort of left-hand part of the chain that has N uh, repeat units. Uh, and then I'm separating out one repeat unit here. Uh, and then to the right of this uh, is more repeat units. The chain continues for M more repeat units. So now we can imagine that something comes in and attacks this ester linkage. It can be water, uh, it can be uh, other environmental factors, but uh, water is one uh, factor that can be at play. Uh, so when this uh, group is attacked, then uh, this uh, ester linkage is cleaved and an OH group from the water then sort of caps the um, polymer chain at this location, the left-hand side. And the remaining H group then acts to form an OH that caps the right-hand side of the polymer chain. So we now cleave the polymer chain into two shorter fragments. So you can imagine this happening repeatedly where these uh, water groups then attack repeatedly these ester linkages. And so gradually over time, the chain is chewed up into smaller and smaller fragments uh, that can then break down. And these fragments, because they're uh, bio, it's a biopolymer, these fragments are lactic acid, so it's a natural uh, substance that uh, you know, could be argued that that's environmentally more, uh, more friendly and sustainable. But I just wanted to highlight uh, this mechanism about how these polymers uh, respond to the environment. One key thing to notice is that this process takes a long time for PLA. You know, it's marketed as kind of a, a degradable, uh, polymer and that sort of makes you feel good but this process can take months or even years to happen uh, you know uh, in, in a landfill uh, it needs ideally uh, optimal conditions uh, optimal moisture and temperature levels uh, to happen uh, at the fastest rate degradable polymers in general are also of uh, high interest for biomedical applications so for example uh, you would like to implant a scaffold uh, that uh, is seeded with some cells uh, to do a, a therapy or a, a treatment. Uh, and so those, those cells need to be sort of arrayed on some kind of, a, a, some kind of a structure. Uh, so these kind of degradable materials can uh, provide that structure and then they'll dissolve uh, once the cells start to grow and uh, assume that structure. So either for implants or also for growing artificial tissues uh, outside of the body these kinds of materials are important. But this degradation rate is too slow. So this can be accelerated by making a copolymer where you have this uh, you know, lactic acid monomer group copolymerized with a glycolic acid group. And so this copolymer then uh, is susceptible to this breakdown much faster than, uh, than just PLA. This can happen in, in days, uh, you know, depending on the, the chemistry that's used. So this is more uh, appropriate for 
uh, these kinds of biomedical applications. But it's the same basic idea. The downside is that these materials currently are very expensive. You're talking about hundreds of dollars per gram, like a sugar cube size uh, of this uh, material would take uh, cost, uh, you know, hundreds of dollars. Uh, so uh, that's a barrier that uh, has to be overcome, uh, one of the barriers.